Hello, I'm David Wallace, founder of PV Reporter and our nonprofit sister organization, NPN Cancer Connection. I'm an NPN patient advocate living with PV since 2009 and your host for today's Patients Are Asking program. We would like to thank our sponsors, Insight, Pharmacentia, Abbey, and Bristol Myers Squibb for their support of today's program. Today, we're really excited to have Dr. Geith Abuzina from Will Cornell Medicine in New York join us. Doctor, please give us an introduction. Thank you, David. Uh, I'm Geith Abuzina. I'm a uh, faculty a member and assistant professor at the Weill Cornell uh, Medical College. Um, I do both uh, clinical care and research uh, in the field of MPNs at the Silver MPN Center uh, here in New York. I'm happy to be here today, David, and I look forward to some interesting discussions uh, in the realm of PV. Excellent. Thank you for joining us today. So with the recent FDA approval of Bezremi for treating polycythemia vera, we've received several questions on the use of interferons. And just this morning, Pharmacentia, the manufacturer of Bezremi, announced the medication is now uh, commercially available. Patients are asking, I've been on Pegasus and doing well. At some point, I may consider switching to Bezremi. What are the potential benefits or am I better off remaining on a drug that's already working? Thank you, David. This is a very important question that you bring up, and I'm glad you brought it up because I think just like you had this question, uh, several other uh, patients have had that question and also physicians. Um, this is a complicated question to answer. Um, I think there are two uh, perspectives on this, um, and without me being biased to one or the other, I'm going to tell you what both these perspectives are, and uh, um, I think practice is dependent uh, on the physician and the patient. And after having a thorough discussion, uh, both should come to an agreement to what they feel is best for their care. Um, so for those patients, definitely you should ask your physician this question. But uh, from my standpoint, I see this from two, uh, two perspectives. One is uh, if a patient is doing well on uh, Pegasus uh, and they've been on it for a long time, They've tolerated the drug, they're doing well clinically, and it's effective in controlling their disease. Um, then why change something that's working? I think that's one perspective to, uh, to mention. The, the second would be there are some challenges with um, uh, Pegasus that might be overcome with Ropeg. Uh, certainly having a drug that now has an FDA approved approval or FDA label uh, makes, makes it a little bit easier to get the drug and get access to it, at least one would think. So in certain cases where there are some financial hurdles, um, getting insurance approval, which we haven't seen as much uh, in the past few years with Pegasus with the emerging data, but certainly there are still some hurdles as being a drug used off label, as is many other drugs that have, are used in the treatment of PV, uh, the off label makes it a bit of an issue sometimes or a financial hurdle that could be overcome now that we have a drug that's FDA approved. Um, certainly, uh, in some patients, the, there is convenience in dosing a drug less frequently. Um, doing a drug that's uh, once weekly uh, versus every two weeks might be a convenience factor uh, for some patients. They might feel that doing it a, once a week helps them stay regular on track and that doing it every two weeks makes them forget about it. <laughs> um, but for others, that could be a convenience factor. And certainly the frequency of dosing can be adjusted based on uh, the response, the tolerability, um, and the preferences of the patient. So I think that that comes with an advantage to be able to have a drug that has uh, pharmacokinetics uh, that make it a long, longer acting drug dosed less frequently. Okay, excellent. Thanks for giving us uh, that thorough overview. Many hematologists at the local level are you know, they still recommend phlebotomy and aspirin for low-risk uh, low PV patients. So why is that? Um, are there opportunities for patients to educate their local physicians? And how might Bezremi change the treatment paradigm for low-risk PV or PV in general? Uh, 
Great question, David. As you know, for uh, PV, currently the, uh, the management going by treatment recommendations established both nationally and internationally um, suggest a risk-adapted treatment approach. Um, so generally thinking of a patient of being a high-risk or low-risk patient, um, which has its limitations, but the way the risk stratification system is geared is to predict or estimate the risk of a PV patient to developing a um, cardiovascular event or a blood clot. So that being said, it is well established that high-risk patients, um, those who are at high risk for developing blood clots, would benefit from cytoreductive therapy using, uh, you know, as agents, cytoreductive agents, in addition to phlebotomy as needed to control the um, red cell parameters. So that is well established. And when it comes to the first line cytoreductive of choice, I would refer patients to the randomized clinical trial that led to the approval of ROPEG, both in the European Commission and, and the FDA. And that is the um, uh, PROUD PV and the CONTI PV studies uh, that have uh, established uh, ROPEG interferon as uh, a drug that is superior in controlling um, blood counts uh, and also improving uh, other outcomes in the clinical care of PV patients. Um, so in that clinical trial, it is clear that for high-risk patients, uh, ROPEG interferon may be a better option uh, for, for therapy. Hydroxyurea is, is an acceptable option too for high-risk patients, and not all patients are candidates for interferon alpha, so that's important to highlight. When it comes to thinking about lower risk patients, um, those who are considered uh, to be less likely to have a blood clot, uh, and that currently is categorized as anybody under the age of 60 who had never had a cardiovascular event. Um, again, that being a limited uh, stratification system that frankly, in our practice, we don't, we don't use routinely. Um, the recommendation is for phlebotomy only um, however, there are emerging studies now, uh, particularly a randomized clinical trial uh, uh, by Dr. Uh, Tiziana Barbui and others uh, that is uh, called the low PV study um, that has compared ROPEG interferon to phlebotomy alone as a strategy in treating low risk PV patients. Um, and at, at one year of assessment or evaluation, it was shown that ROPEG had a, uh, was superior to phlebotomy alone in achieving the primary endpoint um, of uh, hematocrit control and, and symptom benefit. Um, and although having cardiovascular events in the low risk patient at one year is low, um, that is something that over time should be looked at to also establish that by controlling hematocrit and improving symptoms and improving the disease, that patients are less likely to develop the complications of the disease, which uh, primarily in the early phase are cardiovascular events. Uh, and so that study, uh, inferring from that study, ROPEG interferon uh, would be the preferred uh, treatment of choice in low risk patients. Again, uh, understanding that not, a, not every patient is a candidate for interferon alpha and patients should be assessed and evaluated for uh, candidacy or eligibility to receive this treatment. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much for joining us today. I think you've given us an excellent primer on uh, treatment for polycythemia vera. Um, hope our listeners have uh, enjoyed this wonderful information. So please stay tuned as we have updates from our uh, sponsors today who make these educational um, programs possible. So thank you again for joining us. Thank you, David, for having me. Hello, my name is Meredith Manning. I'm the general manager of Pharma Essentia based here in the United States. For those of you who aren't familiar with Pharma Essentia, we're actually a growing biotech company. We're Taiwanese based and our primary innovation focus is on rare blood cancers. In the near term, we're hoping to bring a product to market that will address many of the unmet needs in the NPN area. For the past year, we've spent a lot of time building out uh, the company so we can help support many of the needs in the MPN community 
and we're thrilled to be a part of the community and we look forward to continuing to partner with you. Speaking of the team members, uh, I would like to pass it over to several of our team members so they can share more about what they're passionate about and what we're hoping um, to do in the very near future. I look forward to meeting many of you, hopefully face-to-face -face in the near term. Hello, my name is Dr. Raymond Urbanski. I am the Senior Vice President of Clinical Development and Medical Affairs here at Pharmacentia. When I think about the diseases collectively known as myeloproliferative neoplasms, or MPNs for short, diseases such as polycythemia vera, essential thrombocythemia, and myelofibrosis, I see areas not only of significant unmet medical need, but areas of great opportunity. The opportunity to provide innovative medicines to patients, to caregivers, and to healthcare providers. We drive this innovation by focusing on the science. We are excited and looking forward to working with all of our colleagues in the MPN community. I believe that together our efforts will have a tremendous impact on the patient's lives. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Kate Reedy from here in Boston at Pharma Essentia. I head up the marketing and business intelligence team. And can I just tell you how excited we are to be a part of this growing MPN community. My team's goal in part is to advance the dialogue, the dialogue between HCPs and patients that really today focuses mostly on near-term risks and consequences of disease in PVERA to one that includes not just near-term, but near and long-term risks and consequences of the disease. And to do this, we need to listen to you and we need your help. And we want to understand what you're thinking and your patients and your communities are thinking. Our mission here at Pharma Essentia is to raise expectations on what treatment effectiveness should start to look like and what those conversations should look like. They should be focused more than just on near-term outcomes. They should be focused on both near-term and long-term outcomes of PVERA. And we look forward to having more conversations with you. Hi, everybody. My name is Sam Lynn. Senior Director of Business Operations at Pharma Essentia. Just wanted to drop a quick thank you note to our friends at the MPN community. We appreciate the collaboration that we've had together for several years. And I just wanted to thank you personally. I know that this is really at the core of what's driving and what's important to us within our DNA at Pharma Essentia. And more so than ever, moving forward, we're gonna have uh, the importance to be great collaborators and support this community. So. Wishing everyone a pleasant day and just wanted to thank you again. Hi, my name is Kristen Griffiths and I work on the public affairs team at Insight focused on MPNs. I'm very pleased to be here today to represent Insight and I would like to thank David and MPN Cancer Connection for having me and giving me a few moments to speak about our company and its commitments to patients. A little background on Insight. Insight is a Wilmington, Delaware based biopharmaceutical company committed to making a difference in the lives of patients through scientific discovery. Rigorous science is at the core of everything that we do to develop, discover, and deliver novel medicines that will meet the serious medical needs in oncology and other diseases. We are committed to providing better outcomes to patients through the medicines that we develop and the education that we provide to support the community. One of our most important commitments is to ensure that the appropriate patients may have access to the medicines that, that they need for this reason, we have developed a patient program called Insight Cares to help support patients and healthcare providers access their prescribed medication. For eligible patients, Insight Cares offers prescription drug verification, prior authorization support, free drug and copay assistance for those who qualify under the program's terms and conditions, as well as ongoing education and support from a representative. Patients who have concerns about access to their prescribed medication should contact Insight Cares for assistance. Information for patient access can be found at www.insightcares.com. Once again, that's insightcares.com. And we highly suggest that eligible patients enroll in Insight Cares, even if you don't think you will need access initially. Circumstances can change, and if an eligible patient 
is enrolled, we will be able to provide the individual assistance more quickly if needed. Regarding clinical trials, we are currently enrolling in clinical trials for MPNs. If you're, suggested, if you're interested uh, in clinical trials, please contact your healthcare provider. Detailed information about Insight's clinical trials can be found at insightclinicaltrials.com. Once again, that's insightclinicaltrials.com. We strive to enhance the patient community to integrate an authentic patient voice through our initiatives. Partnerships like the one we have with MPN Cancer Connection have really been key in helping us um, understand the unpet, unmet patient need and caregiver needs, including disease awareness uh, and also providing um, a true authentic voice in the MPN community through the materials that we create. We host a website called VoicesOfMPN.com where we provide access to MPN information, patient stories, access to inf information on MPN community events such as Facebook Live programs, patient meetings, podcasts, and also a symptom tracker. So I highly suggest that you check out VoicesOfMPN.com to uh, see that information. And in closing, I just wanted to say thank you again so much for giving me a few moments to speak to you today. Programs like this allow Insight to utilize our resources to help improve the lives of individuals impacted most on the diseases in which we work. So thank you so much and have a great day.